Pyokaku just made a statement that should terrify every single person on this planet. And NASA, they're staying silent. But here's the thing. Silence isn't always golden. Sometimes it's deadly. Right now, at this very moment, something is happening in space that nobody wants to talk about. Three Zy Atlas, that mysterious interstellar object we've been tracking, isn't just passing through anymore. It's preparing for something. And what it's preparing for might be the end of life as we know it. You see, three weeks ago, everything changed. Atlas went from being a cosmic curiosity to becoming what experts are now calling an active threat. Its energy output tripled, not gradually, explosively. We're talking a 340% increase in just 21 days. To put that in perspective, imagine your phone battery suddenly lasting three times longer overnight. Sounds great, right? Except Atlas isn't a phone. It's a massive alien object, and it's powering up for something big. But that's just the appetizer. The main course. Atlas has been scanning Earth. Not like a scientist observing bacteria under a microscope, but like a sniper identifying targets through a scope. Every major city, every military base, every nuclear silo, it knows where we keep our weapons. It knows where we sleep. And it's been cataloging everything with surgical precision. Oh, and those 12 smaller objects it released? They're not debris. They're not probes. They've positioned themselves around Earth in a perfect geometric pattern that military strategists would instantly recognize. It's called a weapons grid, and we're inside it. So buckle up, because what you're about to hear will either prepare you for what's coming or make you wish you'd never heard it. Either way, you need to know, because the countdown has already started, and we've got maybe three weeks before whatever Atlas is building up to goes live. Let's start with the elephant in the room that massive energy surge. Three weeks ago, Atlas was humming along at a steady power output. High sure, but consistent. Scientists were monitoring it, taking notes, probably sipping coffee and thinking, interesting anomaly. Then, without warning, the numbers started climbing fast. First, a 50% jump. Okay, that got some attention. Then it doubled. Now people were paying attention. But here's where it gets crazy. The increase didn't stop. It didn't even slow down, it accelerated. We're now looking at 340% above baseline, and the rate of increase is still climbing. This isn't a power-up. This is a full-scale system activation. Think about it this way. You know how your laptop gets warm when you're running heavy software? That's because it's drawing more power, generating more heat, working harder. Now imagine that laptop suddenly drawing three times the electricity, getting hot enough to fry eggs on. You'd unplug it immediately, because you'd know something's wrong, right? Well, we can't unplug Atlas, and it's doing exactly that, except on a scale that makes nuclear power plants look like AA batteries. Here's what makes this truly disturbing. The energy isn't spreading evenly across the object. It's concentrating in three specific areas, and each one tells a story that gets progressively worse. Area 1, the propulsion systems. Whatever engines Atlas has, they're charging up not for a leisurely cruise around the solar system. We're talking about power levels consistent with rapid acceleration or aggressive maneuvering. The kind of moves you'd make if you were positioning for, well, let's just say strategic purposes. Area 2, those field generators. Remember how Atlas bends solar wind around itself like some kind of force field? Yeah, that system is now receiving 400% more power. It hasn't expanded yet, but it's like watching someone pull back a slingshot. The tension is building. And when it releases, we're looking at potential electromagnetic disruption on a scale that could knock out satellites, fry communication networks, maybe even affect electronics on Earth's surface if it gets close enough. But Area 3, that's the real nightmare fuel. Parts of Atlas that have been completely dormant since we first spotted it are now lighting up like a Christmas tree. New systems, unknown functions, and they're all powering up simultaneously. It's like discovering your neighbor's house has a secret basement you never knew about, and now there are strange lights and sounds coming from down there. What's in that basement? We have no idea, but it's awake now. And here's the kicker that should make your blood run cold. The power increase isn't linear. It's exponential. Every few days, the rate of growth doubles. Do the math on that. If this pattern continues, and there's zero indication it won't, Atlas will reach energy levels in about two weeks that we've literally never seen before in any technology, human or otherwise. We don't even have theories for what you could do with that much power concentrated in one place. 
We're watching a weapon charge. That's the only comparison that makes sense, like a capacitor building up to discharge. And when it does, well, that's the question keeping people up at night. Now let's talk about something even more sinister, the scanning. Because what Atlas is doing isn't passive observation anymore. It's active reconnaissance, military-grade intelligence gathering. And the pattern of what it's scanning should absolutely terrify you. Every major satellite in Earth's orbit has been scanned. GPS satellites that guide your Uber and direct missiles. Communication satellites that let you scroll through social media and allow militaries to coordinate. The spy satellites that nations use to watch each other. The International Space Station, where astronauts are living right now. Atlas has examined all of them with focused energy beams that provide detailed structural analysis. It knows how they're built. It knows what they do. And most importantly, it knows how to break them. But wait, it gets worse. Atlas isn't just looking at space infrastructure. It's scanning Earth's surface, specific locations, and not randomly. It's targeting cities, New York, London, Beijing, Moscow, major population centers where millions of people live and work. Then there are the military installations, Pentagon, NA, strategic command centers. Atlas has examined them all. Power plants, especially nuclear ones. Data centers that run the internet. Communication hubs that keep the world connected. Atlas has scanned each one multiple times. And here's the part that should make your stomach drop. Nuclear weapons facilities. Missile silos buried in the American Midwest. Submarine bases where nations hide their nuclear deterrents. Storage facilities where warheads sleep. Atlas has paid special attention to these locations. If you wanted to neutralize humanity's ability to fight back before starting an attack, this is exactly what you'd do first. Identify the weapons, map their locations, understand their vulnerabilities. It's straight out of a military playbook. Reconnaissance before engagement. The scanning pattern reveals something even more disturbing. It's not random. It's not systematic in the way an automated probe would be. It's adaptive. Atlas scans certain locations, then there's a pause, then it scans different locations based on what it learned. It's like watching someone gather information, send it somewhere for analysis, receive new instructions, then continue gathering more specific intelligence. There's thinking behind this decision-making strategy, and those decisions are being made in real time. Whatever is controlling Atlas, whether it's an AI or actual alien intelligence, it's actively managing this intelligence operation. It's learning about us, about our strengths, our weaknesses, our critical vulnerabilities. And it's doing so with the methodical precision of someone planning an operation where failure isn't an option. But here's where the nightmare really kicks into high gear. Those 12 objects Atlas deployed, at first scientists thought maybe they were probes, sample collectors, scientific instruments, standard stuff for an interstellar visitor, right? Wrong. So incredibly wrong. These objects have arranged themselves in a perfect dodecahedral formation around Earth's orbital zone. For those who don't speak geometry, imagine 12 points positioned so that they create a sphere of coverage with no gaps. Every single point in the space around Earth is now within range of multiple objects. There's overlap. There's redundancy. If you took out one, the others compensate. This is textbook military positioning for either complete surveillance or complete weapons coverage, probably both. Each object is roughly 10 to 15 meters across, not huge, but big enough to pack serious technology. And what technology they have is deeply concerning. They're emitting scanning pulses, creating their own sensor network that tracks everything in near-Earth space. Every satellite, every piece of debris, every spacecraft, they're all being monitored in real time. Now nothing moves up there without Atlas knowing about it. But they're not just watching. Each object is generating its own electromagnetic field, similar to the bigger one around Atlas, but smaller. Right now these fields aren't interfering with anything. They're just there, humming along. But here's the thing about electromagnetic fields. They can be modulated, strengthened, synchronized. Imagine 12 force fields that could suddenly link together to create barriers in space. Barriers that could damage or destroy satellites passing through them. Barriers that could prevent spacecraft from launching or landing. A blockade made of pure energy, controlled with precision, impossible to bypass.